This podcast is brought to you by Squarespace. I have a fantastic po- website, burperbert.com. Uh, initially, it was a little, uh, we'd paid someone to do it. And then all of a sudden, Leanne said, we're not moving any merch off our website. And she decided to change our website. If you know anything about my wife, it is she is not technically advanced, at technologically advanced, technically, technologically at all. She barely can find things on Google. Yet this woman put together an amazing website that has increased our merch sales through the roof. I'm saying this because you too can build a website based off your, your cool idea, your blog, your whatever you do. If you have a small business, you can build a website using Squarespace and you don't need to have any of the skill sets of HTML and you can sell shirts like Whiskey Cock, Glock Dog on your website and make money. That is how easy Squarespace is used. They have these great templates you can pick from the colors, the designs you want. You can announce upcoming events like the tour. I have not about announced yet about our drive-in movie theaters. I haven't announced it. It's amazing. It's fa- world-class designers and they've got customer service that helped Leanne throughout the entire process. It got her to help build the p- website she wanted to build and it has increased our business tenfold probably. Analytics will help you grow in real time, built in search en- engines, new patches, upgrades, 24 7 award winning customer service. And that is stated by my wife. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code BEARS to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That is squarespace.com. Enter the code BEARS. Tom, come on back in. This episode of Two Bears is brought to you by Shady Rays. This is not a drill. I. I wear Shady Rays, I swear to you, every day I have a collection of them now. Amazing, amazing quality, cool design, great product, sunglasses. I'm a big fan of sunglasses. The crazy thing about Shady Rays is that it is actually a really, really admirable company, not just making a great product. These are high quality shades for far less than what the big designer brands charge. I think it's the craziest warranty I've ever heard of. Um, They replace anything lost, broken, that's it. No questions. You can, you're on a hike, they fall down the cliff, replace. They're on a boat, they go in the water, replace. I mean, who does that? They also uh, are, they have a, they, they provide 10 meals to fight hunger in America with every order. I mean, I don't know anybody else that's like that. Incredible product, cool designs, incredible warranty, and also an amazing deal. And they're, they're feeding the hungry. It's like, here we go, man. It's, it's incredible. Exclusively for our listeners, they gave us the best deal they have to offer. This is like a Black Friday level deal. Use the code BEARS, B-E-A-R-S, for 50% off two or more pairs at ShadyRays.com. Buy one, get one free. You can get two pairs of shades for $48. Redeem only at ShadyRays.com, where you will find all their newest and best shades. Start the show. One K. Speaking of hot and looking good, looking good. He's Bert Kreischer. I'm Tom Segura. But let's just put the pedal to the metal and go. go, go, go. This is a perfect way to start off this show. Twelve years in the making. It's gonna be a fucking shit show. show. Everyone's gonna, it's gonna, everyone's gonna hate us. A hundred percent. Cheers. Yeah, I mean, some prefer Black American. They don't go with (laughs) African. Podcasting with Segura. (laughs) Fucking asshole. (laughs) By the way, I looked at you like, what were you gonna say? Uh, first and foremost, <laughs> by the way, I just went, I gotta, I gotta give a, sh- I gotta give a shout out to a guy that I should not deserve a shout out. Who? This guy hits me up the other day. I'm not going to say any names, but this guy hits me up and he goes, Hey man, I know that racist stuff bothers you. Um, and I know you're trying to get it to stop. And I went, and then he wrote, <laughs> and then he wrote, he goes, if that's the case, man, as a fan, you have to unfollow me. And I went, what an odd thing to say. And then I checked out his, I, like, obviously, if anyone tweets anything nice about me, a lot of times I'll just follow them uh-huh. and then just go, ah, thanks, man, or whatever. And so I go to his website, and it is, his, his Twitter is just all white national racist shit. Like, he's a legit fucking racist. And he goes, you got to unfollow me, man. I'm just giving you a heads up. I'm looking out for you as a fan. And I was like, motherfucker. Fucking, like... I, I literally was like, I unfollowed him and I was like, God damn it. So you were following, I was following him. <laughs> he, he wrote something nice about my stand up and I just went <laughs> fucking follow. He's like, 
one of my fellow brothers doing it right. <laughs> hey, man, don't give you a heads up. If you gone trying to get ready for this racist shit, you got to stop talking to me now. All right. Woo. God damn it. And then, uh, I, and then, and then I started going like, I should probably go through everyone's <laughs> Twitter is amazing. Like, it's amazing. It's such a great sounding board for reality. Yeah. Watching the last dance, Carl Malone comes into the bus. Yeah. Starts fucking shaking every, with every hands with everyone after they just lost the ch championship. Yep. Shirt tucked in. Michael, great job. Gives yeah. him a hug. He's such and a dork, right? I wrote, I wrote, <laughs> I wrote, Carl Malone is a class act. That's it. That's all I wrote. Twitter lit me the fuck up. You Apparently didn't, he you didn't, didn't know all the details. I did not know any details <laughs> at all about who he was yeah. at all. And also I spelled it with a C-A-R-L. Oh my God. <laughs> what did you learn about Carl Malone? Um, I'm going to always say allegedly in this because I yeah. don't, I, I'm just going off of Twitter. I'm surprised that you know that word, but yes, stick to it. <laughs> Twitter, by the way, shout out to fucking Red Bull. Uh, Red Bull sent me a care package yeah. of all different Red Bulls and a bottle of vodka. Just sent it to me. Hmm. Fucking like, hey, man, if you need some help falling off the wagon. How many days in a row are you sober now? Uh, a lot still. But, really? Yeah. But I'm not, I stopped counting. Is that regular Red Bull or is that like a special? This new... is a uh, sugar-free. It's only got 10 cal 15 calories in it. But I am going nuts on fucking Red Bull lately. You are? I miss it so much. I love when you get a new habit. I, by the way. Uh, less than six indoor showers this year. That's less than six. This quarantine. Nobody, by the way, no one who shares that stat usually shares it. I'm an outdoor shower guy. I'm a cold shower. I haven't, I, I quantified it as hot showers the other day. Yeah. And Georgia goes, they're all hot showers, dad. And I go, not the way your dad takes them. Take them in the hose. Take them in the outdoor shower. You like a cold shower? I love a cold shower. But it you, gets shit done. Do you feel like you, like if you're a cold going into it, you can still do that? Or you like to be hot and then take a cold No, no, shower. no. I can go cold going into it. Here's the thing I don't like about showers. I don't like getting into the shower and then sitting there and going, I could not leave here forever. What? That's the best part. I know, but that then I, I it kind of depresses me. Really? Yeah. And so I just So you really like, use it for a wake up. Oh, yeah. I get it. You out. know what else will wake you up? What? A McLaren 720S with the top down doing a buck 50 on the freeway. I... We have so much to talk to. Write down Carl Malone. Yeah, write yeah. down. Oh, wait, I want to give this before I forget. Uh, we ended last week's episode talking oh, about I have so much to the talk all time about. We teams. To... We disrespected. I did. I left out Alabama. So out of respect, I got an Alabama football shirt just to wear for the episode today because they should definitely be in the top five. By the way, and I got to give a shout out to burperbert.com. <laughs> New merch. Whiskey cock, Glock dog. I like it. Fucking, yeah, right? I love it. Yep. They, we sold a ton of them already. So get one at burperbert.com. New cups, new everything. And, um, um, and, and then Warren oh, Sapp. while you're at it, by the God, way. This is such an exciting episode. There's, there's, uh, there's, there's a whole bunch of new Two Bear stuff. The hat... The fucking hats, they were supposed to be here. I followed <laughs> up and they said that they're this COVID shit has disrupted everything. So it's uh, it, it delayed that too. You're saying that to the guy that's starting a flip flop line. <laughs> we have a hundred boxes of flip flops sitting in quarantine. <laughs> These are on pre sale already. <laughs> and we're waiting for them to get Dude, out of the, quarantine. The hat thing people don't really it's like it's not like most merch. Where it's a design, we partnered with New Era. We, they partnered with uh, like MLB. And we have a legit, like a legit sports franchise hat. And um, yeah, they're like, we don't know. I think it's, this is delaying everything. We're the Sorry. same thing with flip flops. I put uh, a, I put a. Where put are a, the? Where is the quarantine? Where like where are they sitting right now? Though? I think they're in China. I think they're in China. We were supposed to go on pre-sale last week. Free water. I have a flip-flop called the Dylan. I brought back the Dylan. I started a campaign this to bring these fucking... This is now turning... This sounds like an infomercial Did... where like, <laughs> guys are like, let me tell you something else. The flip-flops are great. The hats are coming. All right. So let's, so, let's yeah, switch. So I started I started these flip-flops and they're sitting in quarantine. They're on pre-sale now. I think... You, I don't know. You guys go to free water. Get the Dylan. But i i you know what it was it was like it this this quarantine will teach you a lesson of don't live outside your budget like yeah li literally there's no reason you don't need the bigger better thing like I, last night i was gonna buy an ipad and i was like you know what fuck it i don't know what's happening tomorrow right and like but so didn't you, but didn't you start construction on the new house started construction <laughs> 
you're like, I'm not going to get an iPad, but I'll build a house. Do you want to know? Do you want to know what they just said to me the other day? What? With a straight face. Yeah. They said, so I noticed you're changing a lot of things about the house that you didn't initially want to, we wanted to move the pool. We're not going to do that anymore. We're but you're telling them like, make adjustments to the design. Yeah. Right? Cause it, cause it's like, it's like all the things where you go, fuck it, whatever yeah. dream house. Now you start going, we just need something to live in. Like yeah. we just need a house where people don't know the address. That's it technically. And, and so, uh, so someone said to me with a straight face, are you still building a moat? And I went, yeah, we're going to pass on the moat. That was, that was a tremendous waste of money. <laughs> you had built a moat. I was gonna you build had a, a moat, moat design. I was going to build a moat. Yeah. It's fucking badass. It's pretty cool. Koi pond, little bridge going to drive over. Do it. Well, maybe, maybe if this uh, drive-in movie theater tour works out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That's really cool. Yeah, we haven't announced it yet, but yeah. Yeah. You guys uh, hold, don't hold your breath um, or hold your breath. Hold your breath. It's happening. Hold your breath. Hold your breath. Next week. I'll announce it next week, probably. Details. Details. Big tour coming. You're the first guy doing this. Yep. Yeah. Hey, let's get to all the things we want to talk about. Okay. Wait, wait. Can we call Warren Sapp again? Yeah. I don't know. You read his, like... Did you text? I did. Let me see. This is the last one right here. Okay. By the way, tell me if I don't look like a psycho with all the blue... Sent to let me him. See, let me see. Let me see. Okay. Just read it like him. Wait. So, also, this is you. What up, homie? How was? I got a client. We were arguing about. No, that, that's that's cool. Okay. Can I send another thing now? Yeah. T t text him and say, "Hey, we're on." No! 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 What am I fucking crazy? What? Oh no way! Am I gonna let you text anything? <laughs> What did I do? Are you fucking kidding me? I just dodged a fucking bullet. Have you ever seen those videos of the woman walking with a stroller in Russia and the train walked right by her? Can I text him? Yeah. Okay, look Should what I was writing. No look what I was fucking... writing. Can okay, we okay. give you a shout? Okay, okay. You can imagine how can you finish horrifically it? wrong yeah. this would have been. Yeah. If what? If I just said, yeah, yeah, text Warren Sapp. Just and you just were like, hey, man. If you had to blow one of your teammates, who would it have been? <laughs> Derek Brooks? or What were you going to say? Can we... can we give you a shout uh, And uh, while, while we're recording? You got you to gotta talk like you want to hear it, you know? You don't have a lot of black friends. Hang on. Yo, homie. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> What are, you, what are you writing? We're recording now. Just write, finish whatever you write, then just finish. You know what I'm saying? Feel free to give me a call. You know what I'm saying? Dog. Stop, stop. You're talking and it's voice texting. Yeah, out. I'm trying to help you. No. You know what I'm saying, dog? It just <laughs> said, feel free to give me a call. You know what I'm saying, dog? <laughs> Please send that. Fucking away. He'll be like, the fuck are you talking to me like that? Please let me let me text. No now. way! Come on, that is a fun. That is a fun. I got found a new par party game. Yeah. Switch phones with your friends and have them text. Uh, have them. <laughs> this is just for white people. You just have them text text opposing black people and go. All right, here we go. This is how we test out front. What'd you we're, write? We're recording now. Feel free to give give us a call. You're asking him to give you a call. Yeah, that, then the ball's in his court. No. By the way, this is why I never fucked a tot at a lot of chicks. So you think? No, if it's sent, it's sent. You can't. I yeah. haven't sent it. I'm, I'm, oh, we're recording now. You say, can we get? Can we give you a call? And then he just writes, no. He said no. No, but then what if he does? Then I feel like. Oh, then that's fine. Just you know the answer. Can we give you a call? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Stop! <laughs> I'm fucking voice texting. <laughs> All right, sent, All right sent, let me sent, let sent. me do no, me no, no wait, wait, one no. thing. Let me let me DM or text uh, a black friend. 
of no, yours. No fucking way. Don't Why? Know. No, 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 no. Because I know because it, it it doesn't. It's not now. Let's change subjects and talk about Carl Malone. Okay. So, so what, what did you learn about Carl? I learned number one. Um, <laughs> Uh, the first thing I got is a lot of text of a video of, I guess, someone played him in blackface. Someone played against him in blackface? No, no, no. Someone did. Oh, what was the? Oh, I know what it is. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. Um, who should do an impression of Jimmy Some, Kimmel? Yeah, you should do an impression. Someone... So I got lit up with those. Like, but wait a minute. What? Are, that's not. I have no idea. It was like, it was like anything you yeah. say about Carl Malone, then all of a sudden yeah. that came up, which I don't even want to put on. Don't even put that on screen. Cause I, f I feel like. That was acceptable when it happened. No one lit him up, but now people light him up, and it's like kind of I don't know. Yeah. I'm not standing up for blackface, he but was, that uh, is actually pretty blackfacey though. <laughs> that is like like I'm not calling out Jimmy Kimmel. It, do, but it doesn't look like a spray tan. I'll it give you that. Doesn't look like a spray. Wait, can I just watch the video of this? Does he talk? He definitely talks like a black guy. In yeah, this. he just talks like Carl Malone. <laughs> Carl Malone's like real country, you know. Like he think about he making mm -hmm. that crazy NBA money. He bought. An 18 wheeler. Like what you see, you know, you he's serious? like, I just want to drive a big 18 wheeler. He yeah. He his shirt in. What a weirdo. It was so he was odd. a good looking dude, though. Big dude, strange. Um, had, had, a, had a child uh, with a 13 year old. Okay. When he was a sophomore in college. That was the most problematic. Like, so, like, now my all of a sudden class act thing. And you mentioned earlier, you said allegedly this happened. Allegedly. I said all this allegedly. I think that's actually fucking, but allegedly, allegedly, allegedly she was 13. I don't know. I wasn't there. But I think when you do the math of her, how old her, like, I think, I think when he was playing in the NBA, he had a 20 year old son. <laughs> like, I, 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 all I know is his son, his son goes to a different college, but there's allegedly, allegedly, Carl Malone. This is what the internet told me. He was a terrifying player. I mean, like as far as a uh, physical specimen, there was nobody that could move like that, that was that big and that Dude, strong. can I tell He's you, man? Have you see how yoked Shaq is lately? Yes. Shaq's arms are fucking He's ridiculous. Been working. He got out of shape, and then he went hardcore in the other direction. I want to be, I would be, if you could be best friends with any pro football player, mm -hmm. who would it be? Like, any pro football player? Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. Any pro athlete. Any pro athlete, you could just be friends with them. Michael Jordan would be a good one to be friends with. Shaq would be just fun as fuck. Well, he'd be way fun. Can I tell you? Why do you think Jordan would be a good to be friends with? Just because he's an icon? No, I have a feeling he has no... I, I have a feeling he's the kind of guy you can go like, we should do this. And he's like, yeah, let's fucking do it. You think so? Oh, did you watch I him? Would, I would think that Shaq's more like that. For real? Yeah. yeah. Because he's um, like a, he likes to have a good time. I mean, he goes, he like will DJ at a festival. And yeah, like, Shaq does seem to have a good time. He's always. I would never. Fun. I mean, no disrespect, but there's a lot of guys I didn't would never want to be friends with. Of course, like the ones that take things way too seriously. Yeah, but Jordan didn't feel like that. Like he was like, they, they were I doing think the, Jordan is pretty like for who he is and what he accomplished. Like uh, at least in that in the doc series, you go like that seems like a pretty reasonable personality to have if no, you're iconic. not at all not at all you he don't think he, he woke is? up before the finals had two beers played the piano smoked cigar and then went and played i cannot have two beers and then go do anything no i'm saying his personality important. in the doc in the last dance you yeah. go you don't go like this guy is a dick or this guy is um too full of himself like he seems reasonable enough for who he is. But now everyone's coming out. Like Scotty Pippen said he's pissed off the way he was portrayed. Um, uh, Gary Payton said he was pissed off the way he was portrayed. Like everyone's yeah. angry at the way they were portrayed. I know Horace Grant's upset. Horace Grant's really upset. Yeah. He's like, I didn't snitch. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Yeah, and they said that, that the doc portrayed Michael more than the Bulls as a team. And it's like, yeah. Yeah. Of yeah. course. By the way, that's who we went and to go see. Yeah, that's who everyone was looking for to see and by the way you wouldn't have any of the like he he is the reason the whole team was elevated i mean it is a yeah. team but come on of course it's, it's funny be. to see rodman just be a regular guy in the background uh you mean like in the footage or like in the interview in the in the footage in the footage just to see like oh him just hanging back like him just in in like he seems to be a big sweatpants guy yeah but like him just in like pajama pants walking around the locker room mm -hmm. not being a lunatic just being a regular person they had a cool rodman storyline in in the in the last dance you know like when he was fucking off and they're like where is he i like when when jordan told the story he's like uh rodman said he needed a break and he told 
Phil Jackson and Jordan. Jordan's like, you can't give this guy a break. Like, yeah. He'll never come back. <laughs> and Phil Jackson's like, go ahead, take a little break. I <laughs> go love, to Vegas. I, but I would do that in a heartbeat. Where like he goes, you would be Rodman. Film. You're Rodman. Yeah. yeah. Like where I go, I'm gonna do me. Yeah, and you'd also be like, I just want to blow off some steam for a couple of days. Go be in a go be in WrestleMania four. You could you would definitely do that. Yeah, someone's like, someone was asking me about your wrestling shit, and I go, what shit? And stuff. Oh. And so I go, I go, yeah, man, he's got. I go, you should see what he's got lined up for magicians. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, what? And I go, he's really upset. He says magic isn't real. I think it is. <laughs> I think it is. <laughs> I might have to use that storyline. As soon as we're done with this wrestling heat, we got to get the magicians. These fucking going. rabbit molesters. Yeah. Just, ah! I was at the Magic Castle the other day, and I got to tell you something. I call bullshit. <laughs> All right. Carl Malone's covered. Carl Malone's covered. My, I, I am a fan of the way his sportsmanship. I like to reassess my. Yeah, feet. the sportsmanship is cool. The sportsmanship you is cool. You lose the championship and you get on the bus and go, great game, guys. Yeah. Fucking that badass. Is, that is great sportsmanship. I was talking about what losers I thought people were who were critical of the fact that Michael was a, a bit tough and aggressive and kind of a bully. I saw this article written by this fucking soy boy who said that uh, he was like, he was like, you know, when you watch The Last Dance, oh my God. you realize that, you know, you don't have to be like the way Michael was. You can still be a good guy and win the, all the championships. And then he cites his examples and... All I know for sure, reading that article, you're like, this was written by a piece of shit. This guy yeah. is a loser. He's encouraging people to like, just be mediocre and don't push. Like, people who achieve what he achieved are different. They, I admire it. I'm saying, I'm not even, I'm not that guy, yep. but I admire people like that that can be that like that driven and be like, I'm gonna win at all costs. I mean, I I don't know how you don't look at that and go like, wow. That's that's something to aim for. It would be cool to take like all the goats and put them in a room together and see which one rises to the top. Like who becomes like who gets up. It's interesting, man. It's definitely gonna be a personality it's like a, MJ's. It's like there's be. other ones who are like that, but it's not gonna be one of the Like I would love to I would I don't really know Chappelle at all. Like at all. I mean I don't even think he'd know me if I walked into a room. But I've met him before mm -hmm. and I wonder what he's got that Jordan's got. Like, mm -hmm. I want to see the similarities. That's interesting. I think it's different, though, in entertainment. It's, it's and, funny. It's funny. I, and not to, And I know that he would deny this and he would shut this down, this conversation down immediately. But it could be argued Joe has got hardcore goat traits, right? Oh, yeah. And, and, uh, and also will like not never be um, like like don't know what you're talking about yeah, i'm a yeah. regular guy i'm just a regular guy yeah, and you're yeah. like they've seen you operate yeah you, you work at a different clip than everyone else yeah but like i but i would love to see i just it would like get tony hawk dave Chappelle, laird hamilton oh, like, or see, kelly slater like see their shared traits yeah, and see what's what the thing where they their brains click i think dave's different though in, the, in just because of the type of thing that he excels in it's a little it's just different than Dance. you know the, with with sports there's such like a clear objective goal you're like you got to do like work joe hard was in sports too he was like the world champion no i know uh, okay. but like pod like the way that joe approaches the podcast his podcast that lines up more with that driven sports mentality like he's there five days a week he's doing multiple three hours and then like still getting you know, still spend time with the family, getting his workouts in, working with these, you know, just doing all this shit. It's different with stand up though, because See, I think Chappelle and Jordan have the same, the same, I think Chappelle and Jordan have the same similarity of, of, uh, I don't see failure as an option. I do what I do and I yeah, succeed. That's interesting. Cause Chappelle is the, why wouldn't you have two beers in the middle of the afternoon, smoke a joint and then go to this pitch meeting and then show up to the club, have a couple drinks. And by the way, I'm speculating. I don't know Chappelle's drinking or smoking habits, but I know that he's not a guy that like he'll just have like a. I, I'm guessing. I, so I, wait, by the way, I'm wasn't that in, was that in the last in the last episode where they said the thing about him is that he's present. He's like, present. He doesn't look at any opportunity as failure. That was really interesting, and that's something that I think they nailed that most people probably never thought of. And you're like, oh yeah, he's like you're just here right now. Like right now, same thing goes about taking a shot, right? They said like, yeah. 
Like he doesn't go like, uh, what if I miss this shot? I haven't taken the shot yet. Yeah, why how, would, I, think, why would right? I ever speculate missing but, it? Yeah. Why would I? I would just think of how I will sink it. But then the, I think I guess the part that I struggle like with the comparison is that like, you know, they, they their athletes have especially like like Mike are, you know, they're so driven for all the work for a comedian. You can be a great comedian and like get up at one. You know what I mean? And like just kind of drag yourself in and still be an amazing comedian. So I guess just I think, the I think, work way, you know. But here's the deal. I remember hearing Seinfeld. I, I, by the way, and once again, allegedly. I say keep saying allegedly just because I don't remember totally all these things. Yeah. I do remember them, that I remember them, but I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. Seinfeld saying, uh, seeing a bunch of people, a bunch of guys that were building a building or something in New York, and they were coming back for lunch and going right back to work. I know what you're going to say. Is it, it was Seinfeld, right? Yeah. And he was like, uh, I, need, I looked at my job that way. Like, I should be working all day. I had two thoughts. I think I've said this maybe on this podcast, but I had two thoughts. I was like, number one, you don't, I work all day regardless. I don't, you may not see me clock in, mm -hmm. but my brain does not shut down for comedy. Like, oh shit, it's Spotify. Hang on. They're offering a fucking $100 million deal. Hey, we'll take it. Okay. Um, so ew, that joke almost went horribly wrong. <laughs> but, um, but, uh, but, but the other part of it is like, I don't think Jordan ever looked at what he did as like as like work. Like I think that's the other shift is I don't think Chappelle looks at comedy as work. That's his calling. Like I think Seinfeld I think you're totally right. I think Seinfeld it may be his calling, but he looked at it as a job. Right. A job he loved. And then he wanted to be extremely proficient. I wanted he wanted to be proficient at his job. Right. And I think and I think the difference is there are comics, there are definitely comics that look at this like a job. Like you gotta sit, you gotta write. You gotta like you gotta really work at it. You gotta you gotta get on stage. You gotta do this. And then there's guys like Chappelle that goes, or you can just be the thing that you want to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And be that. That I, I totally subscribe agree. more to that Jordan Chappelle. Like, I just I'm a comic and I I can't help just it. Who you are? It's it, there's yeah. parts of my brain that are just broken. Uh, Chris Rock, he said the difference between they were talking to him about him and Chappelle, and he said, Rock said he goes I go to sound check. I I. I want to see the venue. I want to see the how the lighting's going to be. I want to hear the sound. I want to know where everything is. And and he goes, Dave can just get on a plane, land, be asleep. They wake him up and they're like, it's showtime. And then he just walks out. He goes, so like yeah. the different, you know, that's his approach. Like Chris wants to know where, like, what is this going to look like? And, and, and have it, have it like no surprises. Dave is just like, where are we? I'm yeah. Go do the show. I'm not like Chris. I don't think I've ever done a sound check. Really? Yeah. I just, I, I can tell you what I don't like in sound. Mm -hmm. I mean, but not, not to be, obviously I don't, I'm, I guess I do do the same size venues Chris Rock does, theoretically. I mean, we're all doing the same size venues. It's a theater. Yeah. So it's not like, I mean, uh, yeah, I just tell him I'm very low in the monitors. Like, it's like. Do you know each other? No, I never met Chris Rock either. I met him once, but he wouldn't know who the fuck I was. I've met Chappelle uh, six or seven times, yeah. including twice where I've opened for him. And on the last time that I saw him, he was like, oh, yeah, man, I've heard about you. It's better. That's better. That's <laughs> better. Know. That's better that they've, that they've met you a million times and then heard about you. Yeah. Who was I just talking to the other day that said, I met someone. God damn, I was just talking to someone the other day and they were like, I met someone who spoke at my graduation and and he goes, and then all of a sudden I was working with them and I was like, I was going to go, hey man, you spoke at my graduation. And then he goes, you know what? Guy's like, I'm a big fan of this guy. He's like, don't even ch throw that hat in the ring. Just no. be like, oh yeah, cool. It's yeah. like, it's like. Uh, no, the thing is too, it's like, you, I, when you put yourself in the mindset of like, how many people does this guy meet? How many people I come up to imagine. him? Yeah, I, I was just like, oh yeah, yeah. Nice to meet you too. Yeah, I I mean I've I I I would I could guarantee Dave Chappelle would not know who I am. I could guarantee I don't think so. I could guarantee I don't think so. That Chris Rock would definitely not know who the fuck I am. They they are both pretty aware, especially Chris of like he's really into the world of comedy, who's out there, who has specials. He would he would definitely Let's know. Let's pull who it out. You ready? I'm going to do the list of comics. You tell me if you think they know who we are. You say yes, you say no. Okay. Okay. Jerry Seinfeld, 100% no, does not know who I am. I already know that. I think Seinfeld knows who both of us are. Both of us are? Is that a sentence? It's called Sebastian. 
He definitely knows because Jerry's also very into comedy. So he knows there's no way he he's unaware. Like you've come across his Netflix queue. Jerry watches Netflix too. No. Absolutely. He definitely You think so? He would wreck he'd be like, Oh, it's weird to see you with a shirt on. That's what Jerry would say <laughs> if he met you. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. A hundred I'm trying to call Sebastian, but all I'm getting is his other number. Wait, I wanna wait, who are the other ones? Uh let's go top ten. Uh top Jamie Foxx does not know who either of us are. I would agree with that. <laughs> and I would say I would take it a step further. Here we go. Here we go. I would take it a step further. I would say that he would be disinterested upon learning who we are. I would. I think Jamie Foxx would be like. Uh. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Go back. Go back. Uh. Dave Chappelle. I. I would say no for me. He obviously knows who you are. Chris Rock. I will say no for me. A hundred percent. Definitely knows. Who, definitely knows who you are. No, I don't. I don't think so. Definitely I don't mean knows. that. I'm not saying. I know you're like, not. I know you're not. But I definitely think he knows who you are. Uh, Jerry Seinfeld. I know doesn't know who I am. Disagree. I, no, he, I, I know he doesn't. I went up after him and he was like, um, Louis C.K. knows who I am, knows who you are too. Yes. Uh, um, Bill Burr, no, does not know who I am, knows who you are. <laughs> George Carlin knew who I was. He's, George Carlin was he's actually a, a fan, fan of mine. Of mine too. <laughs> Richard Pryor used to give me props. Let's yeah. see. Eddie, Eddie Murphy. Murphy. Guess Got what? It. Definitely knows who you are. No. Definitely. <laughs> Why would you say that? He does. Watch. Shut up. Watch. Who are you calling right now? Oh, this is such a fun game. There's my guy. Hey, buddy, we're recording a podcast. I got we're, we're playing a game, and I need your you to weigh in here, okay? Because I think you're the one that knows. <laughs> is this about is this about black stuff? <laughs> Who's this? Who is, this? is that Neil? It's Neil. It's Brennan, Neil. Yeah. Oh, shut, oh, Neil. Just oh, no, it, it, I'm telling you, Neil is the key. Listen. Okay, Neil is. Okay, the key. we're playing a game where we're talking about. Um, very famous comedians and whether or not they know who we are and we're having disagreements because I'm saying that certain people I'm sure know who Bert is and he's like there's no way there's no way and I'm like actually I think they are pretty into what's going on like they they're aware of comedy and stuff so can I throw a couple names at you yes now I don't know specifically who knows Bert no just I go, know just but go it, with it, we're, gut, we're just Neil. going with the gut with the gut and the guess oh yeah 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 okay yes. so one of them, okay, I think... We're going through the list, Neil. We're going through the list. Okay, so uh, he said, uh, Dave, does Dave know, do you think Dave has any awareness of who Bird is? Um, uh, it's a no. It's a no. Fuck. Hey, Bird, did you ever meet Dave no. at, the, at the Boston? No. No. I met, I met him one time at the, at the Dayton Funny Bone but he, I yeah, don't think yeah, yeah. It, was, okay. it was not let's real. Put, let's skip over Dave. He might, know, are you, are, he might know you through Jeff Wills. No. Okay. Let's say we'll, we'll, we'll take the loss there. Okay. Now, Sigur, here's a funny one about you, though. Is one time, like this is maybe three years ago when you first started to get a little a little heat. Mm-hmm. Um, it was six. Uh, Chappelle goes, yeah, I keep hearing about Sebastian and this guy, Tom Segura. He would oh. pronounce it Segura. Oh, that's kind of how my dad pronounces it, so <laughs> he might be on to something. <laughs> all right, very good. Um, I'll take that. I'll take that. That's a victory. Um, yes. All right, yes. now, here's the one where I am convinced, and partially because of knowing you, that this person actually has, a, at least knows, he'd be like, yeah, I know who that is. Chris Rock, he's into stand-up. He knows what's going on in stand-up. Mm-hmm. I think he's seen, he, I think he would meet, Bert and be like, oh, how come you, how come you wearing a shirt or something like that? You know? So do you yeah. think, no, no. Yes uh, or no. Do I you th- bet rock does, uh, cause rock is afraid of being out of touch. So he goes out of his way. He knows to, to uh, and also the other thing you guys got to remember is like, uh, people go on, on Netflix. And if you're a, Exactly. Imagine there was a comic that was on the front page of Netflix that you didn't know. You'd be like, "Who the fuck?" Yeah, exactly. Is this? <laughs> exactly. Right. Now, does that mean? Does this translate all the way to Seinfeld? Does Seinfeld have any awareness of who Burt Kreischer is? Do you is? think? Do you think? Um, I'm gonna go. No. No. Okay. okay. Keep going. Wait. 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 Tell me why, though. Why would he not know? If he. If he does. does I, 
because Seinfeld's very New York centric when it comes to stand up. Uh huh. About like he knows like Mark Norman. He probably knows Sam Morell. Okay, because they sees them uh, at the club, and okay, that makes sense. He kind of sees, yeah, I'll see him or else. And here's he the knows, big like, one. Ryan, here's Ryan the big Hamilton. one that I'm betting on here. Okay, and 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 you really are gonna make either make me look like I know what I'm saying or not. Is it possible that the great Eddie Murphy has some awareness of who Bird is? I don't think so. God. <laughs> I thought you said he watches. <laughs> Eddie, no, Eddie watch. does. Eddie does watch a lot of stand up. But last time I saw him. He was like, I hate Burt Kreischer. <laughs> he was like, man, who's that fat motherfucker? <laughs> um, uh, no, I like Eddie didn't know. Eddie kind barely knew Sebastian. Okay. Oh, if he doesn't know Sebastian, he doesn't know me. Like, well, if he doesn't really know Sebastian, uh, I asked him if he knew who Sebastian was, and then Eddie did like an impre- a Tony Danza impression, mm-hmm. which isn't that. But he's like, is that the guy who's like the that guy? Yeah. Um, Do you think so Cosby I I think, would Cosby like Bert? I think Cosby would love Bert. I think so too. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I don't. But that is a that's a good question. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> That's all we I need. Hear, I have a question for Bert. Does he think Will Smith would remember him? Nope. Bert said no. Although, although he did call me random as fuck one time to pitch a movie to him. But, but hold on a second. Bert just said no. He doesn't think that Will Smith would remember him. But oh, one time Will Smith called him to pitch him a movie. <laughs> no. Yeah. No. It was like no. I don't think. Okay. I think it was because. I. I don't think it was because. He remembered me. Uh-huh. I think it was because I was pitching a movie and all of a sudden Disney was interested and it came back to JL, who's his partner. And JL's like, we've worked with him. Will, reach out. I think, I don't think. And Will he just called you on your cell? Called me on my cell and was like. Yeah, okay. Hey, is, is Bert a fucking huge screenwriter? Uh, Bert, Bert actually. Here's I have the thing. great pitches. He has, He is an amazing, amazing pitch guy. You want to walk into it. Does he keep his shirt on? Does he keep his shirt on? It de- depends, depends what the pitch needs. Yeah. <laughs> How yeah. it's going if he's bombing, yeah. he fucking Oh, yeah. Deep. No, oh, no, no. When it's Deckel going come well, yeah. it goes comes off. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's quite an ordeal. Well, look, Neil, I appreciate this. Um, hey, wait. I got to tell Neil something. Okay. So uh, I was talking to my kids the other night, and we were t- we were talking about... Uh, we were talking, my, you know, obviously for everyone not listening, my cousin lived next door to your family. We were talking about yeah. your family and we were talking about how many, we were t- it was about large families and about how many kids were in your family. And one of my kids, I won't put names out so no one gets in trouble, but one of my kids goes, wow, what is that? Like, what did you have? Like 12 kids? 10. 10. I said 12. And one of my kids goes, any special needs kids? And I went, no. And they went, wow, that's impressive. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's impressive. That's also debatable. <laughs> <laughs> and I know exactly which brother he's talking about. All right, Neil. All right, uh, guys. Love the show. Have thank, a great afternoon. Thank you, Neil. I appreciate it. I'll call you later. Bye, buddy. I'd like to thank our sponsors. Whoop. Both Tom and I are wearing them. And this is the best fitness tracker I've ever used in my entire life. It tracks your performance of sleep, how your body's recovered, the stress you put on your body throughout the day, and it tracks your workouts. If you use the strain coach, you can then set it up and it'll tell you how hard you should work out based on the sleep you had the night before. Right now, it's Mental Health Awareness Month this May. And the current situation we're in in this quarantine, it can't be more important to monitor monitor the stress put on our bodies and how we recover on a day-to-day basis as our routine changes. I wake up first thing in the morning. Did you have any alcoholic drinks? No. Uh, have you not had caffeine? No. View screens in bed? No. Take prescription medicine? No. No. And then I take a look at how well I slept. It's one of my favorite things. I do it first thing in the morning. And last night, I got 80%. Today, I can put... I've already put a four point strain on myself and I can put more strain. It really is. It is next fucking level. And based on how strenuous your day is, the app will also have a sleep coach that'll tell you how long you should sleep and when you should be getting bed, when you should be waking up based on the recovery you need to set performance goals for tomorrow. For our listeners right now, Whoop is offering 15% off with the code BEARS at checkout. Go to Whoop.com and enter the code BEARS. That's W-H-O-O-P at checkout. Enter the code BEARS and save 15% off. Sleep better 
recover faster, train smarter, optimize your performance. While we're all staying at home, this is the only way to do it with Whoop. Support for today's podcast comes from Manscaped. Manscaped has the right tools for the job. Father's Day is right around the corner. I know you love your father. And I there's, do. There's no, wouldn't it be great if you could give your father the satisfaction of getting like a blow job or having like, and you can't, but what you can do <laughs> is help him have a better chance of getting one with Manscaped. Have your dad shave his balls, maybe trim around the base of his dong. And who knows, maybe your mom or your dad's life partner will service him as a thank you for Father's Day. I love this pitch. This is exactly <laughs> what I would like to do. I'm going to send my father a Manscaped, the new Perfect Package 3.0, number one recommended gift all year long. Has the cordless body trimmer, waterproof, has the light on it, cutting edge features, ceramic blade. It's incredible. I love the Manscaped 3.0. <laughs> He, so, all you got to do is get 20% off and free shipping with the code CAVE20 at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use our code CAVE20. It's dad bod season. Time to get smooth. Let's get your dad blown. All right. Now, here's right. the real question. Yeah. And I know Neil's listening to this, but here's the real question. Yeah. Do you think Neil would be 100% honest or do you think it'd be fun to just go, oh, he definitely doesn't know who the fuck Bernie I, is? <laughs> I think I actually think he was being very honest. I think he was being honest too. I, I've already said at the very beginning. I, I just think I don't. But I do think. He, see, he also. I. I mean, I was. I was being very optimistic. He did agree with Rock. Rock knows. Rock knows. I'm oh yeah, you. yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe he does. But maybe I'm because I'm his brother's age. Chris Rock's brother. Tony, Tony, and I started oh. together. By the way, I don't. I, I'm being dead serious. I don't think Tony Rock remembers who I am. But I've, you, I've you, been you're around. forgetting now, though, that like you're on the biggest platform doing stand-up multiple times like you're okay then that's a great fucking question okay because how many times have you run into people that pretend not to know who you are but know who you are hmm i run into that more than people don't know who i am do you mean like strangers or no 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 comics like big comics that will go oh yeah i don't know who you are and then they do and by the way it's not i'm being fair it is not the list we read from. There's another list of comics yeah. that are equally as big that have found success in different platforms where when you meet them, they go, yeah, I, I don't know who you are. And then they'll say something where you're like, hold on, how did you know I did that? And then you're like, oh, you oh, fucking liar. Right. You've, you've known, you knew who I was the entire time. Yes. And you're talking about <laughs> Arabs. <laughs> Ahmed Ahmed. Other guys. <laughs> uh, Zach is uh, Zach. Zach's knows, a sweet guy. Zach is the one of the few people, by the way. He's very nice. Who, when he when he sees you, he reintroduces himself. He goes, "Hey, guys, Zach Alvanakis." He's yeah. He and he's also a fucking laugher. He's a, like he love laughing with Zach. He will laugh at shit. That's like only happened once, really. But. Um, Mark Marin. Yeah. Eugene Merman did not know who I was and did your podcast. I did my podcast. That's interesting. Yeah. And well, he, I think he had heard of me, but not like he was like, he definitely never heard of the machine. H. John thing. Benjamin. People always tell me I look like him. H. John? Mm hmm. Yeah, he's in New York. People always are like, I think his name's just a, John Benjamin. Uh, it's H. John? Yeah. Everybody. Whenever he does something, they're like, hey, Tom, I didn't know you were in this thing. And I'm like, All right. John Benjamin had a show called John Benjamin Has a Van. Is that? Yeah. It? Yeah. And who? The, he's, it, he's a funny dude. Was he the guy who did the show? There was a guy who had a show on Comedy Central where one of his sketches was, um, hey, man, I, I got a new reality show called You Can't Film Here. And it was security guard going, hey, you can't film here. And he's like, oh, thanks for being on it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who that is. Emo uh, knows who we are. Yeah? Yeah, Emo is a very sweet guy. I don't think Tim Heidecker would have any clue who the fuck I am. Scott Aukerman would never know who the fuck I am. Do you think they Richie would like Watts, you, though? No. No, I don't think Scott Ackerman would look at my stand-up and go, no, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Let me go through this list, and I'm going to tell you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say names, and, I'm gonna, and they can dispute it, but I, these are the people. I don't, I'm not even going to go with who know who I am. I don't need anyone to know who I am, although it does feel good in your own business to have people acknowledge that you do that too for of a living. Of course. But, um, but here are the people that would not get what I do. I think Maria Bamford would love what I do. You think so? I think she would totally get it, and see what I do and go, I don't need the shirt. I get it. It came off, but I think he's a good comic. I think Maria Bamford 
would love what I do. She's phenomenal. I think Bob Odenkirk would love what I do. Patton, I know, loves what I do. He thinks I'm a fucking genius. By the way, I have a podcast with him in a little bit. But I think Patton's fucking great. Did you ever hear yeah. his fucking DBR bit he used to do? No, but he is he is very, very talented. Sarah he, Silverman saw me get my ass waxed when I got my ass waxed and said it was one of her favorite things she's ever seen. How did she see it? She, it was a long time ago. You used to get passed around like people would see it was on VHS. And she saw me get my ass waxed. And every time I saw her, it would be like, that is the funniest thing I've ever seen. Louis C.K. thinks I'm a very nice guy. How do you know? Uh, he, was, I, he just texted me or emailed me the other day. The other day? Whatever. It was like a, a year ago. But... And he said, I think you're a very nice guy. Uh, no, he's, he said it's very nice to see the success I've had. He said, really? really? Yeah, yeah. That's very nice. It was actually a really great text. I was, uh, text I or email? Or email. It was an email. I only have his email address. I don't have his phone number. And he said, it's really nice to see the success you're having. Yeah, he said, uh, yeah, you want me to get, pull up the email? Yeah, I, I'm assuming it's in a special folder. It definitely is. By the way, I keep, I keep certain emails. Patrice, did he like you? Uh, yeah, he did, but not my comedy. <laughs> like, <laughs> like but, I, but in all fairness, I'd only been doing it two years when I was around him. So, mm-hmm. like, oh, but yeah. he liked me, so. Um, did he tell you what you're doing with shit? Uh, everyone tells stories about how he was like, what the fuck are you doing up there? Uh, he used to, no his his uh, he he was very he was very complimentary of what I did, but he would take what I did and then fix it for me. So like the perfect, I mean, I've told this a lot, but the story. Remember the joke I used to have about touching cops' faces? Yeah, that happened with him on a plane. I was getting cut off by a flight attendant, and she, I didn't realize it was happening. I knew it was happening. I asked for a beer. She can't. She stopped and then leaned in to tell me I can't serve you anymore. And I put my finger on her lips. I went shh. And he saw that and was like, what the fuck did you just do? And She didn't get mad at you for that? Uh, no. And, he, and uh, she ended up letting me drink. I told her, I'm, your... I'm trying, I'm trying. I can't do two things at once. And so... Let me see. Let me see your phone. I'll, I'll find it. I got it. Hang on. New tour dates, new tour dates. No. No, I'm not giving you my phone. Just let me... I can, I'm ever, not going to do ever, anything. Ever. I'm not going to do anything. I'm just better at searching. No. I deal with him all the time. No, watch. I got it. New tour dates, new tour dates. Um, L O U I. How often Louis C.K. comes up in my. In my. My dad texts Bert, do you know who Louis C.K. is? When? <laughs> in November. I was like, yeah, that I do. <laughs> okay, here you go. No, that's the wrong one. Oh, that wow! I don't know where it is. Um, is this like when you saw Nirvana? No, no. This is. I'm just not giving you my fucking phone because I don't trust. I'm you. not gonna, Bert. I'm I not gonna trust you. I'm not gonna do anything with your phone. Just let me look. Come on. I'm no, not, I can tell you it was a year ago. If I promise you I won't do something, I'm not gonna go ahead and do something with your phone. No. What you are you gonna just, do? Change the password? N- I didn't even think of that, Tom. <laughs> That's where my brain is. So wait, what were we talking about in the? Can we see this? This is something I've always wanted to do. Wait, what? lock your phone. Okay. Lock it. Hang on. I'm so close to finding Louis. 2020? No, 2019. God, definitely have to trim some of this out. No, we don't. Guys, this is what it makes podcasting great. Here we go. Nope, that's not it. Can you lock it and hand it to me? Yeah. Okay, I just want to see. I've always, I think about this all the time. Okay, just swipe up. And it worked. No, it didn't. No, it didn't. <laughs> Wait, let me see if I can get your phone to do it. What's your password? Huh? What's your password? I don't know. I'm trying to look. Is yours like one, two, three, four, five, six? No. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you my password. What the fuck? <laughs> Anyway, uh, let's. What were we saying? Uh, how were we on that list? Uh, no, Patrice. Patrice was. Uh, Patrice saw me touch that woman's face, and then yeah. I tried it on stage. We went. To, we were flying to Scotland. I tried it on stage, and Patrice was like, uh, "That it's not going to work. You're calling her a flight attendant. You, she's, she's a stewardess." And he's like, "It's not going to work." That next morning at breakfast, he was like, he was still thinking about the joke. 
I think I think I was ridiculous to Patrice. Yeah. So to watch me interact, it was just like it was real a real combination of like white privilege and frat boy shit that he had never been around. Mm -hmm. And so he was like the next morning of breakfast, he was like a cop he needs to be a cop. And I was like, what? And he goes, say, say you touched a cop's face. That's fucking cause no one. And then he broke down the concept of touching someone's face. Mm -hmm. He was like, man, when you touch, that's a prison fucking move. Like, and then he theorized about touching someone's face about how, when you touch your face, you take the power away. Yeah. So the fact that you touch a cop's face, the guy with all the power, you touch his face and then, and then like just working from there. And so I went on stage that night and I said, you know what cops hate when you touch their faces? And he was like, that's the joke. Yeah. So I, I and, but then, but, but I don't, but I drove, definitely drove. Does Dimitri stuff. know you? He should. Yeah. He definitely should. Does he like you? Uh, I think he does. I mean, I, I, you know, I think Dimitri and I are on very different, uh, no. different, like just work <laughs> at a very, very different level. No. Yeah. He's the same guy. Uh, David Cross? No, he does not. I met him and I met him doing a show together and not only did he not know of me, but I, don't, I think knows he started to autograph something for me. <laughs> he was like, huh, what did you want? Mulaney knows who I am. Yeah. Yes. Hussein knows who I am. Marin knows who I am. Uh, yeah. Eugene did not, but does now. Uh, Mike Birbiglia does. H. John does not. Todd right. Berry definitely does. Janine does not. Although we did have a great fucking Do you moment. think that that uh, lady who just, who just pled guilty to the, pri the college scandal looks like Leanne? Lori Laughlin? Yeah. I don't know. You don't think she looks like Leanne at all? No. Really? Did you change my fucking password? Oh, God. Um, Hold on. I didn't see Lori Laughlin in here. No, but I'm saying like when you see like those images. Yeah, she kinda, does. Like, yeah. Right? You've been seeing a lot of different yeah. of Leanne and different people. That does look like Leanne. Oh yeah, the other one. Yeah, the other one was someone. But that was like uh, that was because it was the image was far away. This I think looks like her. God damn it! I can't find. What are you doing? Podcast. You can't that email find... from uh, Lori Laughlin that does not look like me on well, that picture. No, All right, go back the, to that the list. Ones, go the back to that, that list. I'll, I'll clean this up and then we'll move forward. Is that her with Kirk Fox? Eddie Janine and I had a great moment at what you call it. Eddie Izzard uh, definitely does not know who I am. Paul F. Tompkins does. Geraldo did. Flight of the Carnicores doesn't. Did, the, did Greg Geraldo like you? I don't know. I mean, yeah, I think so. He was very nice to me, but I was so below him. Like, I was working the door. Yeah. He was a really cool fucking dude. And by the way, yeah, I, call, I called him one time. He was doing my, he was doing Cowhead show, and I called in to listen to him do radio. Mm -hmm. and, and during commercial break, Cowhead's like, hey, Geraldo, just so you know, Bert's on the line. And he was like, oh, what's, what's he promoting? And he was like, nothing. He just called to listen to you on radio. And he was like, oh, that's so sweet. And we ended up talking a little bit. Uh, Heidecker does not. Emo yeah. does. Ackerman does not. Norton does. Reggie Watts does not. Dana Gould does not. Eric Weinheim does not. Eddie Pepitone does. Harlan does. Does, I, I think. Kindler, you think he's a big fan? Yeah. Yeah? I think Kindler. I, I think Kindler, what, I think Andy Kindler, what he likes is to dislike something mm -hmm. and i think i give him a lot of stuff to dislike <laughs> <laughs> i think he looks at me and he and he just starts pulling his fucking hair out and he was like all i had to do is take my fucking shirt off yeah <laughs> i would pay money to watch harris whittles is past i don't think he did um john door does i think greg barrett does beth lapidus i don't know her sean Collins. okay we're on the list all right Kathy Griffin does, but wouldn't recognize me. Why? Because so, I I had met her a couple times. I worked with her one time, and then I saw her, and she didn't know who I was. Do yeah. you push when you pee? No, just no, just let it out. I used to push when I was in high school. In high school? Yeah, because I had a theory that it's if it sound. Speaking of Will Smith, his stream is aggressively loud. Really? Yeah, I took a piss next to Will Smith. Can you call him? Yeah. Try. It's going to be crazy how much he sounds like a white guy when he's not, like, on. <laughs> he almost sounds like a vet, like a Will Smith. Should oh. I hit it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just see what happens. Speakerphone, speakerphone. Okay, here we go. He does sound, like, if he doesn't know that people are listening, he sounds like a bro. Like, he doesn't even sound black. I'm, I'm just saying. You'll hear it. Hello? 
Hey, it's Bert. Bert, you're on our podcast, Sweat Equity, right now. Is that all right? I'm pulling. At least it sounds white, doesn't he? What do you? Uh, <laughs> you're on my podcast. No way, really? Yeah, yeah. Our podcast can 69. Our podcasts are 69ing right now. How are you doing, man? <laughs> good, good. How's Tampa? Tampa's hot as shit. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> this is really strange. I was just talking about you about. 15 minutes ago. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this, this is all just, this is a joke. Do you still get <laughs> fresh <laughs> Prince money? <laughs> yeah, no way. Yeah. Wait, let me call you. Let me, is, let me call uh, you. I'll call you right back. Okay. That's a guy I know named Will Smith. This not the same Will Smith. <laughs> that guy's real name is Will Smith? His name is Will Smith. And I just called him. And he was like, yo, bro, what's up? <laughs> uh, I used to do that. I used to save friends in my phone as Tom Cruise and so Lorenzo would call and it would say Tom Cruise like a fucking send it to voicemail and they're like Tom Cruise is calling you right now I was like I do not want to talk to that fucking guy when was the last time you got in a fight I can tell you the last time I got into a confrontation okay it was 2009 in that's how long ago in January or February of 2009 and this was a physical confrontation I was, pulling, I was going down 6th uh, street in in LA and yeah. I was turning into the La Brea Tar Pits. I was shooting my special the very next weekend. Uh, my Comfortably, comfortably Dumb. dumb. I, t I was turning left into the Tar Pits to go onto that, uh, to park. And there was a, uh, like a Mexican dude, kind of like, uh, um, like, like taller. Uh, it's hard to explain, but like a, 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 an ethnic dude, like Latino maybe. And he was walking slow across the thing and I'd already started turning and he slowed down and looked at me like fuck you and I and he had a backpack on and I went and I honked and I scared the shit out of him and his backpack jerked up over his head and I started laughing and then I fucking zoomed around him and he went lost his shit he's like fuck you and I put it in park threw it in reverse and vroom, and I zoomed up to him I said what the fuck did you say and he got in my window to fight me and he smiled and he had adult braces and I thought I don't want any piece of that kid. <laughs> that is a kid whose parents did not give a fuck about his smile. He grew up with no privilege. That is a kid who's had to scrap his way through life. And now he's probably in fucking community college, right? Uh -huh. Got his, worked his way out of prison, community college. And the one thing he noticed is that you don't get far in life with all jacked up teeth. And he's trying to fix it himself. And here I am diverting him back on the path of badness of he's going to get in a fist fight, go to prison and goes, I was just getting my life fucking straight. I got my dope braces and everything. And so I fucking took off. Wow. Yeah. I assessed that. I remember. When was the last time you had actually like hit somebody? It's gotta be college. Yeah. I haven't punched someone in a long time. You know what I never got to do? Or I always wanted to do what? Like try hit someone with my elbow. Like, did you ever have fantasies really? of yeah. how you would fight people? Yeah, of course. I would have, I still have this, is guys talking shit in his car, mm -hmm. goes to get out of his car, and I kick the door on his head. Like, as he opens the door, steps uh, out, yeah. I kick the door, and it hits his head, and he goes unconscious. Yeah. I think I fantasized about that. Yeah. Like, I, I, I fantasize about the door slam. You I've know? never done the door slam. Like, like, no, I've never done it, but I'm saying I've fantasized I've about, fantasized about it. Boom, I've, boom, I've boom. fantasized about fights a lot, considering I don't fight at all. Like, I don't fight. Yeah. And I, I, it's even more so now that I'm, um, that I'm an adult. If someone cuts me off in traffic and talks shit to me, what I do is I let them win. I reward that bad behavior because I know that if I do that, they will see value in that bad behavior and they'll continue that bad behavior until one day they run into a fucking MMA fighter like Brendan Schaub who decides to scrape the fucking cement off the driveway with their face. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, keep doing it, man. Keep doing it. You're, 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 you're winning. So you go like, hey, man. I go, no, I stutter. So yeah. like, uh, I say I cut you off in traffic and then light me up, okay? I'll be in the car next to you. Just pull up okay. and light me up, okay? Hey, what the fuck? You... And then I spit in my own car, right? And then they go, what the f He's spitting his own car? And then they take off. They go, I fucking killed that. Yeah. Yeah. So you're playing mind games with him. Yeah, I spit my One own time car. I remember, this is like one of my early, like for me, it's like very LA. I was on living on the east side of town. And I'm at a gas station off the 101 that is like in a, 
it used to be a super dicey neighborhood. It's one of those neighborhoods that started to shift into like hipster neighborhoods, right? But <laughs> yeah. there's still it's it's on the line. It's amazing the so, softest white people are the ones that shift it. Yeah, yeah, I Isn't know. That crazy, but then the you end softest, up softest, no backbone, no knowing how to fight. Roll up their their tight pants. Uh, skinny, take over pale, those neighborhoods. Take over fucking. They do. They're the ones. And by the way, that gentrification shit is hated by people of color. Yeah. Is that and they, and these are the we get it. We oh headphones. If we want to talk, I don't know. Yeah, you know, I'm just. I heard you earlier, Tom. That oh, I'm sorry. That you wanted to... Uh, I don't know. Energy. No, I just didn't know. I didn't know what happened. What happened? Well, no, I just heard you earlier say that you've always... You said you wanted to elbow someone in the face. Yeah. Is there is there a video coming? I'm, I'm certain there's a video coming. I no, mean... I just, what is it? No, not yet, but... Uh, Can we finish the thought and then you'll go to this? Okay. Just tell, just go tell ahead, me. No, go just ahead. Tell Play me, the thing. Me, just tell me. Well, I was going to just offer my face if you wanted to elbow it. What? For us both? Uh... No, just for Tom. I can elbow you in the face. Yeah, I'm a. If you want to do that, uh, like I'm a company man, and if if that will make you happy, I'm I'm open to doing that. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Okay. Yeah, let's talk about it after the show. And okay, cool. Okay, sounds right. good, man. I don't know. All right. Jesus. Um, sorry. So, I've never had anybody volunteer to do something like that. To get elbowed in the face. Where do you elbow them? In the cheek or the teeth? Well, or that's the, the thing is I would... Oh, that's interesting. I would think that the goal... I would want to do either the front jaw elbow, front elbow. Or, or like eye area, you know? Ooh, just destroy someone's... Yeah, whole orbital bone. Crack this. God, man. Wait, what were we just saying? I have no idea. What were we no. just saying? Oh, about... Uh, you were telling me about your gentrified neighborhood. Oh, my God. So I'm sorry. I, I moved this and I'm, I'm going to to work early morning like you know rush hour yeah stop for gas and i'm hold in, on rush hour but there's an asian guy in the car he touched your, air, your radio and you say don't ever touch a black man's radio <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> so i've i'm as i'm putting gas in the car i know i've told this story before but i it has stuck with me for fucking 15 years putting gas in the car you know it's it's probably seven eight o'clock in the morning or something uh a car I guess I'd gotten gas and is zipping through the gas station parking lot, like way too fast. Oh yeah. So as I'm putting the gas in, this guy goes boom, like between cars and between the islands, you know? And so I just looked up and I was like, shook, shook my head. And like, you know, the other guy putting gas in his car looks over and is like, you know, just like, what a fucking, it's like nonverbal, right? Yeah. You shake your head like, what a dick. And then I just hear, And this dude went in reverse and he pulls up and then hits the brakes. This guy is in a piece of shit. I mean, <laughs> rusted out, <laughs> shitty 25 year old car. This is what is great about men, okay? Yeah. Is that men assess the fact that you're describing his car. Yeah. You have done a profile of this dude oh. in your head already. This My is, wife does not do these profiles. This is a fucking, it's a shit box. He is he has black hair that is like like a mullet, like long in the back. Yeah. He's got on like a trucker hat and he has a thin black mustache. Not fully grown in, like just little oh, bits of hair. Yeah. And he looks like a piece of shit. Like he looks strung out kind of so I'm putting, I just hear <laughs> and he like zips back, <laughs> hits the brakes, and he goes, What's up, dog? Like like that from his car. And I'm and I look up like Talking to me? Yeah. <laughs> I go, what's up? And he goes, you acting like you know me, homie. Oh, my God. This guy has already won the fight with me. Like, oh, yeah. And I was like, huh? And he's like, what's up? And this is because he saw me go like this. Like, shake my head. He broke the law. And then he saw you yes. disapprove of him breaking the but law. But then I do, like what you I do the assessment. This guy, he looks smaller. Yeah. He looks, I mean, like a totally different class of human. <laughs> yeah. And he's in like, and I look at the whole thing and I just go, no. And he was like, as he's looking at me, he goes, Arr! and I fucking rips smoke zips out of the place. Now 
in my mind, in that quick assessment, I thought this is someone willing to murder for seeing someone shake their head. Amazing. <laughs> I, I really did think that. What I remember an amazing I, individual that I needs put, to be cast in something. Oh. Like he, a reality show where it's just like called Roll the Dice. He's for sure dead. There's oh, no, there's way, no way he's yeah, alive. This guy's not alive. But that's like when you hear in the news, like this morning at a gas station, somebody fucking shots. That's the guy. Dude. That's the guy. that And there, that guy, like if you looked at his face, the car, everything, I think looking back on it now, you go meth. This is a, a real, like a legit meth head, you know, a tweaker. Yeah. As folks adapt to this changing world, we're all going to be buying more stuff online than ever. I know for a fact I have, and I know as an e-commerce seller myself uh, with the website burperper.com, we are selling more stuff online. Are you ready to meet the demands of the new delivery culture? culture? Be ready with ShipStation. Why ShipStation? Because getting online and selling a lot faster can be tough, but... How do you keep track of everything? Which ship carriers do you use? Are you getting the best rates? With ShipStation, it is the fastest, easiest, most affordable way to manage and ship your orders. Just a few clicks, and you'll be managing orders, printing out labels, and getting your product out to happy customers. ShipStation makes it so much easier. No matter if you're selling on Amazon, Etsy, or your own website, ShipStation brings all orders onto one simple interface, making them really easy to manage from any device, even your cell phone. What I love the most about ShipStation is they work with all the major carriers, USPS, FedEx, UPS, even Amazon Fulfillment, so you can compare and choose the best shipping, sh shipping solutions for you. And knowing that, you also get the discounts that are usually reserved for large Fortune 500 companies, knowing you'll always be getting the best, best deal. No wonder they're number one on the online sellers. They're the number one choice. Right now, two bear, Bears One Cave listeners can try ShipStation for free for 60 days. When you get use the offer code CAVE, make sure your business is ready to meet the demands of delivery culture. Get started at ShipStation.com today. Click on the microphone at the top of the homepage and type in CAVE. That is ShipStation.com, then enter the code CAVE. ShipStation.com, make ship happen. There is, there is a way to run through life just head first like a bull mm -hmm. where you don't bump into a bunch of people until you do. Mm -hmm. Until one time you do. Where it's like, you know, it's like, it's like, uh, and I love, uh, one of my favorite things in the world, this is gonna, I'm going to sound like a psycho. One of my favorite things in the world are those videos of young kids in a public situation being the bull in the china shop being yeah. no one's going to talk back to me and then an old man fixing it yeah did you ever did you ever see the video on the subway of the guy young blood that guy where the the kid was going around just mad dogging everyone mm -mm. and he goes you picked a wrong motherfucker and this guy gets up it looks like he's been painting houses or something but he is a big man and he beats the fuck out of three kids really beats the fuck please tell me you can find this type in young blood train uh uh young blood train fight uh no that's god damn it just train fight old man train fight it's not called the ambulance the bus thing no 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 train fight you just type in train fight and then type in old man or older man. Okay, this is him. Train fight. William Nelson's brutal assault. Is that right assault. here? Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, oh, this is awesome. So wait, hold on. Let me set it up, okay? Because okay. I don't think this is the full by video. The way, by the way, before you play this, we were talking about, you know, fight fantasies. Yeah. For 15 years, I've had fantasies about having played that different with that psycho in the gas station. Wait, how did that, you? That's why. Did, so okay, okay. Because let's, I imagined okay, him going. I imagined him going like, "What's up, dog?" And I'm just going, "What's up?" And then him being like, "You act like you know me." And then I, instead of being like, mm -mm, just walking over to the car, and since he's in the car, see, I always thought like he maybe has a gun. He looks like someone who would probably carry a gun. Yeah. But like, yeah, going over, punching through the window, not the windows down, like punching through the opening, and beating the shit out of him in the parking lot, and then having his car, because slowly roll back like into the actual building just yeah with him passed out you know can i tell you my fantasy as you told me the story i yeah. had a fantasy sure. so so uh so say it to me okay what's uh, up dog hey what's up you acting like you know me homie tim 
Is it Tim? Oh, I'm, and then I walk up to the car. I'm sorry, I thought you were. Boom, boom. Gigi, 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 Gigi. Ga, 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 ga. I do fucking know you, and you're a bitch. That's my fantasy. It's a pretty good one. I can really quickly go into fantasies. Can I tell you a hardcore secret? I feel like there's some rage beneath the surface with never, birth that we don't know about. I have never, ever, ever, ever told, and I'm debating. Let's watch this first, and then I'll do it. I felt like, just so you know, right then, you were going to be like, I killed a black person one time. <laughs> just, a, just a person, Tom. They're just people. <laughs> okay. All right, let's see this fight video. This now, Just to set the scene, because this is a seven-minute fight, this kid has been, I think, tormenting just about everyone on the train. And by the way, I don't know if that's really what happened, but in, in my head. And in your head. I got in it. my head, he's been tormenting everyone but on the train. this is the right video? This is the right video. Okay, okay I'm so excited. <laughs> He's way bigger than that. Way bigger. By the way, he was painting houses. Yeah. Oh, shit. This is aggressive. Yeah. Now watch this. Watch this. This is a big mistake. You fuck with the wrong one today. Now look. This is the big mistake. He's out unconscious. Yeah. And the guy comes back and he puts his hands up. Don't hit him. 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 Oh, yeah. He's, yeah. Well, yeah, he's already so done. This poor kid L learned. Just, how long is this? This guy is done. No, don't do it again, he man. Does it again, Tom. Oh, no. Guy won't get out of the way. Look, he's going to get the other one. What? This dude's so fucked up. This is why you do not fuck with anybody. Is it the same guy? Same guy. He, guy's unconscious. He doesn't know where he's going. Why they don't have a black woman commentating UFC like this woman here? Is beyond me. He said, Look here, he in your business. You about to do Wait, press pause a second. So, was this kid harassing I think, people? I think these, this kid was going through like mad dog and people. Mm -hmm. By the way, this is the backstory in my head. I don't think. Oh. Because he. Yeah, I don't know if. Can you see if, see if you can say, pull up uh, William Nelson's. These are real people. Go. Already, I, already, I'm is five steps ahead of you. Pull up these same, exact same names. I guarantee you this uh, went to court. That's how we know their names. Oh, right, right, right. William Nelson. By the way, you may need to bleep out their names when Metro we just said train. them. I wonder what, what city is that in? Uh, Colorado, I'm guessing. Isn't that crazy that I just thought that? Here we go. Maryland. Oh, I was very wrong. Okay. Someone want to read make that? Make it to bigger? Can, that can read out loud? Yeah, yeah. Make it bigger and I'll read it. Um, all right. Metro Transit Police have arrested a Maryland man for assault of another passenger on the Metro train. William Nelson, 52, of Morningside, Maryland, has been charged with felony assault for the incident that happened last Sunday around 1 a.m. Okay. Who's on Video, the train on Sunday at 1 a.m.? So it's Nelson for, punching 46-year-old Anthony. That was a 46-year-old man. 46-year-old man? As it was traveling through the Anacostia and Congress Heights station. Scroll down. Thomas told Fox he was attempting to stop an altercation between Nelson and and two teenagers on the train. So you did have some information, right? Yeah. Thomas said it all started when Nelson started cursing at the teenagers after they put their feet up on the seat behind him. The dispute turned physical as Nelson started hitting the kids. Thomas then got involved and suffered a broken jaw, fractured cheekbone in the beating. He also required seven stitches for his lip. He's rescheduled for surgery. Oh Jesus. my God. They're going to put a plate in. Fuck. Oh, I just want, I'm going to read this. This is, I'm saying this as a public service announcement. This is a public service announcement for respect, meaning respect other human beings 100% and realize that any human being at any point in their life will give you the possibility that you will be drinking through a straw for the entire time that they put a plate in your head. 
That is why you don't fuck with anyone. Yeah. The, because you'd never know. And I'm, I hope there's a that fucking 15 year old listening chair, to this. Feet on the chair shit. Feet on the chair. They put their feet. These kids you can put, put your foot on his chair. You put the foot. All you did was put a foot on someone's chair. And the guy said, hey, man, get your foot down. And you went, nah. That's because you're young and you think you got everything fucking solved, dude. That is the most brutal f- beating I've ever seen. Yeah. And by the way, it's crazy what I what I take away from it. Um, yeah. Is that he? I was like, he clearly got done painting houses. Well, he was. He had like workman's boots on. He had. But it's like, like it's amazing your memories. Like yeah. you, you know, like in an you Agatha Christie that. movie, they tell yeah. you the things you remember. Like you know, and I was like, you definitely got done painting. By the houses. way, do we have any uh, comments? YouTube comments? Is, is there something to show? Oh yeah, these are got to be insightful. This is the canary or, in the mine. Or meme posts or anything like that. Yes. Yes. Okay. Tom. Oh. All right, here's from Carolina. Tom is the exact bad influence that every mom warned their kid about. From wait, what's this? How, I don't know. How did he just the, comments on our on our on, on our, our show? show. Yeah, oh, our oh show. I thought this was like. Oh no! no I was no, like, no. how the fuck quick oh, did no, that no, get up there? No, no, no. I'm just switching it up. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you're right about yeah, respect people in person, especially because that's why. And by the way, how many times have you had an incidents where I know that I have had them where, dude smaller than me or guy pulls up through in the thing and you let it go and you walk away feeling like a portion of a man that you didn't stand up for yourself oh right when somebody and know that that is the fucking outcome that you avoided right by just going so sorry man the respect thing about like i've been in movie theaters where someone puts their feet on my chair and turned around and i dude like, i i hey, please don't do that and they're like oh okay but yeah it can go anyway someone could be like nope which is just fucking, that's just rude. It's disrespectful. I, I had an incident. I had an incident with, I don't ever want to get beat up in front of my kids. Of course. Travis like, Johnson told me a story one time. Who's Travis Johnson? He played for FSU and played in the NFL for like 10 years. Yeah. Defensive tackle. That he was at a Pee Wee game. Um, and Travis Johnson's like 6'5", 300. I mean, you know, he played professional fucking football for 10 seasons. Yeah. And he said that um, one of the, other kids dads was starting to get into it with him and he was like being like you know trying to de-escalate the situation the guy kept barking and he he said that he uh he told the guy um if you don't shut the fuck up i'm gonna beat your ass in front of your son and he'll never forget the day that his father got his ass kicked and he said the guy was like good call yeah thanks for the reminder man god damn it man let's i can i tell you my one goal in life is to go through life without my daughter seeing me getting beaten up in my front yard i don't think that's gonna happen <laughs> i gotta give a shout out to these gang bangers okay i don't know who you are i don't know i don't know what i by the way i'm being very vague about this yeah there was a period there was one night in my life i was in the car with my my family my daughter's I was in the back seat. Leanne's dad was in the front seat. Leanne was driving. Mm -hmm. I'd had a few pops, right? And traffic was bumper to bumper to bumper. And we were trying to get across Hollywood. And I don't remember exactly what I did, but I I said something like, fuck you to someone who was blocking the street. And it was four gangbangers in a fucking hoopty who then flipped a bitch on Sunset or wherever, Franklin. And followed us. And it was bumper to bumper, but we were catching lights that they weren't catching. And they were running through them. They were running through them to get up to fucking get me. I remember this so vividly. You want to give them a shout out? Because they pulled up next to our car, ready to fight. And one of them saw that I was with my kids and Leanne. And and they just went and took off. They actually chose not to pull me out of the car and beat the living fuck out of me. I remember that so vividly. Mm -hmm. I remember that so... We were driving down Vine, and I remember that they pulled up, and they were... And I don't even know. I yelled something stupid. Yeah. Like, fuck you. Suck my dick. And my window was down, and I knew they were chasing us. Leanne didn't know they were chasing us. Her dad didn't know they were chasing us. Our daughters didn't know, but I knew they were coming after us. And I'm thinking, oh my God, what did I do? I just yelled something stupid out of a car window. When to I'm people with my who are violent for a living. Who like to be violent. And yeah. they pulled up next to us, like where cars park on the side. They pulled up right next to us. And they were just next to us. So the driver's side, I was in the back left. 
the driver's side was right up next to us and the driver just looked at us smiled and went no and i went and i think they saw it on my face like i don't want this to happen either and they just took off that's nice I remember I got to give a shout out to those gangbangers yeah, for yeah. not killing me that night. That's very nice of them. And I man, I'm telling you, that's why I don't like confrontation. Is uh, maybe a confrontation at all because I always feel like it could escalate into. It can, it can, um, into that shit right there. Should we go back to those comments or no? <clears throat> Memes, posts, any of those? Uh, let's say the way Tim, Tim laughs with that face when he agrees with Burnt's premise gets me every fucking time. Keep it high and tight, jeans. All right, thanks, Steve Carlson. Bert, all religions are cults. Bert, 20 minutes later, I should start a religion. God, I love these two so much. That's from Pearl. <laughs> Cody Vaught wrote, Bert is now openly arguing, why not just be delusional as a life philosophy? By the way, I have thought about that a lot. Because yeah. I was like, I was like, what is wrong with me that I go? Because it's, it's so true. It's like, I, I keep thinking, thank God that, that that fucking turned out. Oh, did you see that list? Oh, that's... The top 25 comedians of all time, <laughs> one through 25, are Burt Kreischer. Shout out to Chase Leopard. He made that. Chase Leopard is quick on the draw. He makes great draw. stuff. He makes Chase great Tre Leopard really is. By the way, Chase Leopard, I'll give him a, another shout out because I know he's going to rip this and put this on his Instagram because yeah. he's good like that. Yeah. You mentioned something on a podcast. Like, you know, one time I did this. Chase Leopard will find it, rip it, put it on his Instagram, and then I can post it and share it on mine. Yeah. My ass wax, my fuck, anything I've ever done, Chase Leopard has had the ability of finding immediately. He is, he won a Blackberry uh, when I had a promotion with Blackberry. <laughs> he won a Blackberry? <laughs> so, like, a year ago, maybe more, I just started reposting things from BlackBerry, like the, the phone. <laughs> I'd be like, what an awesome phone. I just reposted it. I remember and the, this. Yeah, and people I were like, what this. the fuck are you posting this? And I, I was remember like, this. I was like, because it's an awesome phone. And they were like, no, it's not. It's a piece of shit. And everybody got super mad. <laughs> and then I kept posting it. And then BlackBerry was like, do you want a BlackBerry? And I was like, I'd love one. <laughs> so they sent me one. And then they were like, can we partner with you? <laughs> I was like, yeah. Oh. So I had a giveaway where I was like, hey, you got, I forgot what the, the oh. whole premise was. And he, he won the black. Dude, Party. let's start a corporate partnership. With? Name it. Like, let's just decide we want to start a corporate partnership. And then they've got to because we'll bully them into it. Oh, that's a great philosophy. I, dude, I love that more than anything. I what did about that with those like three wheel cars? You know what I mean? You've seen those, those driving around? trikes. Yeah, is that a trike? A trike, you mean with two up front and one in yeah. back or one up front and two in back? I think two up front, one in back. I see those riding around sometimes. What are those called? Uh, I had, uh, when I was doing Birth the Conqueror, yeah, yeah, the Fat Grizzly. Nah, no, dude. Jesus Christ. Yeah, 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 like that kind of shit, yeah, right? Yeah. But I'm saying, there's like a I was real, thinking, you know what we should do? Car, there's like a car one where it's like- All you got to do, like here's a cage it, around it. This is how it works, okay? okay. This is how a cor corporate- this is, let me start that over. This is how a corporate sponsorship works in today's day and age. Tell me. You find someone with not so much of a social media presence, okay? Mm -hmm. You then blow up their social media and say, like I tried to do it the other day with um, with the NFL uh, NFL store, the NFL online store. Mm -hmm. uh, I was like, what jersey would you wear for the rest of quarantine? And all of a sudden they've got like 4,000 replies and the NF stores, L store is like, wait, what? They only have 20,000 followers. I did it with combos one time. Yeah. This is the best one I ever did was combos came out with blue cheese and buffalo wing sauce yeah. combos. Yeah. And I was like, you've redefined my palate. I can't stop thinking of new flavors I want. I hey remember guys, that. Hey, I guys, send that. your new flavors you want for combos. And then all of a sudden, combos hits me up. And they're like, dude, thank you so much. Like, how can we repay you? And I was like, bro, I'm a fan. Just combos. Yeah. And they sent me boxes and boxes of combos. And that's all I wanted was I wanted yeah. combos. That's it. If you love a brand that doesn't have that much of a social media presence, then you find, you know, fucking free water flip flops. That's my flip flops. I just hit them up. I love their flip flops and I just hit them up. And, and Which brings us to a great point. Rolexes. McLaren. <laughs> By the way. Oh, I can't. I went over to Bert's house this morning. I want you to go online. I want you to look at luxury cars with low. Just go on and on their Twitter. Luxury cars with low. Um, You're not gonna find it through a search. You're gonna have to spend the time doing it. No, but no, but with in low in Twitters. Yeah, go yeah. on Twitter and type in because you know what we could do. What I wouldn't mind giving away a luxury car. Yeah. Get them to give us a car that we each drive for a week and then give it to a fan. Yeah. I would love that. Um. 
Yeah. Because I, I don't want a luxury car. I have no interest in luxury cars. Yeah. It's so bizarre. I actually, so I'm going to tell, can I tell the story a little yeah, bit? Sure. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, because I'm going to talk all over you anyway. Tommy was supposed to have a meeting today and he didn't. His meeting was canceled and he was like, hey, I'm right by your house. He called and he was like, you want coffee? And I was like, I was like, wait, did I fuck up when two bears, one K bar? And so I went out and, and he was in a gorgeous yeah this thing is 720s fucking, spider yeah mclaren it's it is wild i'm saying like it is neighbor walks outside and walks around it a couple times gorgeous yeah. which happened my neighbor literally saw it heard yeah. it, it and like, walked out and did a couple laps it's stunning it's a stunning car it is amazing i wish i and then he was like you want to go for a ride and i was like i don't really care about this shit but leanne really does leanne really by does. the way it was she was her and the Anne was screaming and cheering and clapping. Like she, she turns into a uh, like primal. Yeah, it turns into like, like old Leanne. I, she was like, "Woo!" And she was kicking the fucking uh, dash. <laughs> I thought at first when she screamed, I thought she was screaming like, "Oh my God, slow down!" She was yeah. like, "Do that again, get go get it, Tommy, go yeah. get it." Yeah, she fucking. Lost her shit. And so I'm sitting out front. Leanne and Tom go for a ride. And just pulling out the street, it was like, Vroom! and Le I could hear Leanne go. Woo! She goes, I'd be losing my muscles. I was losing my muscles in that car, Bert. And they go for a ride. And George is like, is there a and, wild animal in front of our house? And then George is like, by the way, like 6'3 now. Yeah, I know. Georgia texts me and she's like, what's going on out there? Because she heard Leanne scream and Tom. Yeah. But, and I said, come outside. So Georgia comes outside. And she goes, where's mom? And I said, mom's on a ride with Tom. And she's like, what? And then all of a sudden Tom pulls up and Georgia sees this car and loses her mind. She's like, cause Georgia's 15. She turned 16 in like a week. Mm -hmm. And she lit. we've been looking at cars and she's like, oh my God. And then I go, why don't you go for a ride with Tommy? And she was like, for real? Gets in the car. I wasn't in the car, but I will tell you, I wasn't in the car, but wait, tell, I, so this I didn't know so any fun. of what happened. This was I just so heard fun. you cross a street. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God. I, get, I zipped down to the stop sign and I was like, are you ready? She was like, yeah. And then I go up to the next light and I punch it and I go, it's going to be fun. She goes, this is fun. I was Because she was more reserved. Like, this the end, is I, fun. And you're like, oh, we haven't even started yet. I, I was like, oh, I go, you're going to feel this though. So then we get to the on-ramp and we... That's what Leanne said. Leanne goes, the yeah. on-ramp, Bert... She goes, it, we went zero to 40 in like us less than a second. It, it, it is, it's, it's lightning fast. It's so, it's so fast. So then we're just like zipping around, uh, the freeway, always respecting the steep speed limit. And, um, then I, you know, I find an exit to get off and I was like, fun, right? She was like, that's so fun. This is Georgia. She yeah. goes, that's so fun. I was like, oh, I go, you think your dad would do it like this? And she was like, no. <laughs> And I go, why not? I go, you don't think he would like to drive this? She goes, he wouldn't know where to go fast. And I go, wait, what? She goes, he would go fast in like a parking garage. <laughs> <laughs> and I go, really? And she goes, but then on the freeway, he'd be like, you never know when a car can come out. <laughs> And I was laughing so hard. <laughs> she's been, she's had me backseat <laughs> drivering her for so long, and I drive her fucking nuts. I'm like, oh my oh god. My when she god. said he would, he would like hit something in a parking garage, and on the freeway, oh. he'd be like, you never know when a car can come out. <laughs> I, I fill her up with the most useful driving knowledge. Yeah. Like I'll go, all right, see this guy over there with the tape on his rearview mirror. She's like, yeah. And I go, on a side mirror, I go, this guy doesn't give a fuck about life, okay? He broke off his window. He's not going to get it. His mirror is not going to get it fixed. He's just taped it on. This guy does not. He's not looking for you. He's not looking for anything. He's just dealing with his breakup. So fuck this guy. She's like, how do you know this? I go, just look at him. It's, it's what we do yeah. when you size up cars around you. Yeah. Like I go, okay, this car up here, it's a Range Rover, but it hasn't been washed in months. That's a fucking liberal woman who's against the environment, like for the environment. <laughs> she has no idea how to drive a car. She doesn't deserve that fucking car. You tell her this every time? She's All like the time. And so she, I read people on the street based on their car and how yeah, they behave. Sure. What would you have said if you were in another car and you saw me in that car? I go, now that guy has a small dick. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's so funny because you- And you would have pulled up and I would just gone. It's true. I it <laughs> it's true it's true yo you know me dog <laughs> you're acting like you know me homie uh I Leanne left and I saw and I I knew that car I know that guy 
right? Yeah. And I was like, I was like, do I immediately? I was like, do I have any want for a car like that? And I was like, no. Yeah. I, but I don't know why I don't. And I wish I did know why. It's so funny. I know you and Joe love cars. I love cars. Chris, I took Chris for a ride in the other in the McLaren GT the other day. Yeah. And we were talking about how whenever you see one of these cars, you're like, and someone punches it, boom, drives it. You're like, what a fucking asshole. Always. You're always, always. Like, what a fucking asshole. And then he's like, but then as soon as you're in the car, you're like, this is a shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> like when you're in it and you're doing it, you're like, this is amazing. And then as soon as you step out and you see someone else do it, you're like, this guy's a prick. Dude, it's so funny because I don't know what it is that I want that is the equivalent of that car. Like I was trying to think of it today. I was like, it's so cool that you got into a position in life where, and it should be noted that you're not like dropping hundreds of thousands of dollars to drive this car. No, it's it's a it's it's, it's a, a press car. It's a press car. Yeah. It's, but it's cool that you can leverage your hard work for a treat like the, that experience. Yeah, yeah. you like yeah yeah. And I was like, and it's even cooler for me to let Georgia two weeks before she's about to turn uh, sixteen yeah. get in a car like that. It's like really cool. It is cool. But like I don't technically care about cars. And I was like, what the fuck do I care about? Like, what do I care about? Like, remember when we first talk, started talking about flying private? We're like, that would be so fucking amazing. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I love that, but it's not worth the money for me. So like, it's not worth it for me. Right. What is the thing? I can't find it. I don't know what it is for me. I don't know, man. I mean, those things I think just naturally come to you. I mean, there's, you know, there's always like, you can go on any like social media, you see activities, somebody's driving a car, going fishing, shooting guns, uh, jumping out of planes. These are all adrenaline things, I guess. And it's like some of them click with you and some don't. Do you know you what know? it is? I, this is going to sound Some people so like silly. pro wrestling, you know? Some people do it. By the way, I'm obsessed with this new thing, Dark Side of the Ring. Oh, yeah? It's so fucking good. Well, on Vice? On Vice, yeah. It's so fucking good. I've heard it. It's really done me, well. People have told me about it. Yeah. <laughs> you don't think I get brought every... Dude, one of us steps in shit, we both smell it. I know. <laughs> oh, I got to tell you this one. This That's one's... a fucking brilliant... Fu Did I just come up with that? Wait, I got to tell you. We're right like the Corsican down. twins with gonna internet like drama. So, Christina, ever since like the kids were even smaller especially Ellis. Ellis is now four. When he was like two, 16 months, whenever she saw somebody, let's say, walking across the street um, where they shouldn't or somebody smoking a cigarette, that she goes, that's a dum-dum. And she would tell, El that's a dum-dum right there. You yeah. know? And tell him, told him, told him. So the other day, he's, he's been taking night shits where he like, come, <laughs> like, I put him to bed and then he'll come and be like, this is like not too late, but I'm like, he's already supposed to be down for an hour. I'm like, what's up? He's like, I got to go poo poo. And I'm like, <laughs> all right. So I had been on the roof smoking a cigar. Yeah. And I go down. I'm like, all right, all right. So he sits, he sits down, he takes his shit. And then I wipe him. And then he goes, what is that? And I go, what? And he goes, it makes like a big dramatic oh, sniff. He he's... goes, you don't smell that? And I go, it's probably your shit. And he was like, what's that smell? And I'm like, oh, and I put together that it's the cigar. I go, yeah. oh, I was outside and uh, somebody was burning something. <laughs> and he goes, you're lying to him like you're four. <laughs> I know. I go, somebody was burning something. And he goes, was somebody smoking? And I go, I think so. And he goes, was it a dum-dum? <laughs> And I go, oh, yeah, you have yeah. no idea. I go, yeah, it's real dumb. And he's like, dumb dums. <laughs> Shook his head. That's a dumb dumb. It's a dumb dumb. Oh. oh, I love that you lied back to him like you were for. Oh, someone's building a fire of cigars out there. There's a cigar burning session. A cigar <laughs> Wait, what was the last thing you were going to say? You were going to say something else? Fuck. Oh, yes, you know. were. I cut you off to tell you that. For once, I cut you off. Does anybody oh. remember? What was, was that? What were we talking about? I don't know. You step in shit, wrestling, and then I was like, oh, I got to tell you this thing about. I don't know. It's something about, I, w I don't remember. Dark Side of the Ring. One yeah. of us steps in shit. The other, we both yeah. smell it. That was, I liked, I just like that phrase. No, I like that phrase too. It's amazing because uh, people always like that when that whole thing went down, every, every meeting I walked into, they're like, what's up with that? Or that like, it's crazy too. Now everyone's coming to me like, uh, how much did Rogan get? And I was like, I have no fucking idea. Like what, like I always just make up numbers in meetings and I just tell them 
They're like, how much? And I go, $750 million. And they're like, what? <laughs> and they're like, are you like si per episode? Yeah. <laughs> they're like, how much was he getting per episode? And I was like, $150 million per episode. Like I just make up numbers. Yeah. But it's, I think that's the fun of this business. Of course. I mean, Sp God damn it. Spotify keeps calling us. The, right. uh, <laughs> we got to wrap. Do we really? Yeah. What did we, what, what, what did we not talk about? We didn't talk about Bert's football story, Bull Durham. Top What's my five. football story? I don't know. It's from last. He, 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 there's no way it's going to prompt his memory. Um, we got to run. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, guys. Hey, uh, hold on. Did we forget anything? I feel like we... Did we forget anything? I don't know. You're going to announce some shows you're going to do no, soon? No, no. Yeah, yeah. We're going to announce those soon. Um, that's it. New shirt. New shirt. Go to BertBertBert.com. A whole bunch of new merch. Ooh, I, that's what I, I want to talk about. The um, Two Bears, One Cave merch. Yeah. Those... Where do we get those? I want the tie-dye shirt. They're, they're sold out. They sold out. Those are fucking awesome. I know. There's a whole bunch of other new ones. Can we do, when we do merch, new can we get boy. me one too? Because I love our merch. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. I love my merch too, but our yeah, merch yeah. is fucking awesome. We'll do it. Merchmethod.com slash Tom Segura for all that other stuff. And the hats should be there soon. Bert, I love you. I love you too, Tommy. All right. Bye, guys. Bert and Tom. Tom and Bert. One goes topless while the other wears a shirt. Tom tells stories and Bert's the machine. There's not a chance in hell that they'll keep it clean. Here's what we call Two Bears, One Cave. No scripts, a bit of booze, amateur partology. Dirty jokes, raunchy humor, no apologies. Here's what we call Two Bears, One Cave.